Sequels are a tricky business. Whilst we're always hungry for more delicious content in the worlds we love, it can so often turn into a misjudged mess that they hardly ever feel worth it. Whether it's from studio interference, wacky new avenues that don't make sense, or just straight up gambling with iconic properties that bet the shirt off their back and come out naked and ashamed, there aren't many number twos that can justify their existence and our time in the process. Worst of all, with the disease of sequelitis, is when the follow-ups forget what made their original movie so charming in the first place, whisking up a sequel missing its key ingredient like an omelette with no eggs. Filmmakers just need to remember that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's far too late with that sort of thinking when it comes to these titles that forgot their roots. I am the carbon copy of Ash from What Culture, and these are eight sequels ruined by idiotic changes to the original concept. 8. Hannibal Wasn't a Psychological Thriller The Silence of the Lambs was a significant box office and critical success, but the sequel suffered from not realising what made the film so great in the first place. It's the battle of the wills between the demented genius Lecter and the vulnerable yet courageous Carice that makes The Silence of the Lambs what it is. But Hannibal is happy to just become a study of Lecter instead, and because of that, it loses its edge as a psychological thriller. While the prequel Red Dragon made a better job of things, Hannibal leaves us with too much time to spend with a man who actually has very little interest to the audience without Clarice to chastise. Yes, he's a cannibal, but it was this combined with his ability as a master psychologist that made the original film so interesting in the first place. The movie reverts to quirky lobotomy scenes and places Clarice as a secondary character, resulting in the whole thing falling flat when what we really want is Clarice engaged in more psychological battles with the most infamous of cannibals. 7. Weekend at Bernie's 2 Revives Bernie Of all the films on this list, the change in premise for the Weekend at Bernie's movie was perhaps the most bewildering. While it could be very strongly argued that there was no need for a sequel at all, the premise of the original film was actually quite clever, and absolutely the one aspect that should not have been touched in a sequel. Hell, it was the film's sole selling point. The original shows the titular character of Bernie murdered by an assassin. When young dude co-workers Larry and Richard find the lifeless Bernie at his beachside mansion, they decide to pretend that Bernie is still alive for the very justified reason of continuing to enjoy his mansion for the weekend. For reasons only known to the producers of the sequel, this premise was not only ditched in the follow-up, but was actively worked against, with Bernie being brought back to life. The machinations of how this occurs, primarily through what can be best described as musical voodoo, are bizarre to say the least. The change in premise left the film with nowhere to go, and left a lot of heavy lifting to the rather unfunny lead actors. Perhaps Weekend at Bernie's 2, Rigor Mortis, may have been a better choice. 6. Transformers sequels dropped three-dimensional characters for caricatures While many critics quite rightly bash the Transformers franchise, the first movie was at least a damn good action flick. Michael Bay may not be the most subtle director going around, but his ability to bring the transformable vehicles to life and explode stuff around them with boobs and stuff is second to none. Sadly, this cannot be said of future installments of the Transformers universe. From racist stereotypes to cigar-chomping exposition machines, the actual Transformers quickly turned into typical Bay caricatures faster than you could say Autobot balls. With no human character worth any weight at all, the film soon presented as a noisy mess with no soul, with even fan-favourite Bumblebee becoming an irritating clown. Audiences eventually lost patience and interest with the films, with The Last Night displaying the worst box office returns of the franchise so far. Thankfully, the problem was rectified in the excellent Bumblebee spin-off, bringing back the one thing that made the Transformers such a fan favourite in the first place – a bit of heart. 5. The Matrix sequels were set too much outside of The Matrix The Matrix remains one of the most groundbreaking movies in film history. Its philosophical look at a dystopian future made us all ponder what reality was, and if we were all complicit in the mundanity of our own lives. Oh, trippy stuff. The original's choice to spend the first half of the film within The Matrix, with audiences left quite literally in the dark, allowed the film to play out like a nightmare, and left us considering some of life's most confounding philosophical questions. What is reality? Are we all actually living in The Matrix? Does everything really taste like chicken? The only scenes outside of The Matrix occur within the spaceship, a claustrophobic space that deliberately obscures the audience from what remains of human civilization. 
the Matrix sequels largely dropped this premise of questioning reality, instead presenting the Matrix itself as a type of computer virus that needed eradicating, while setting the film more in the real world. And the fact that the real world more resembled a rave party than a civilization meant the sequels lost all the mystique built up in the original. Sure, there were some strong scenes within the Matrix sequels, but far too much time was wasted with padded out conversations and gazes into the middle distance when what we just wanted was more bullet time. 4. The Transporter 2 Forgets Jason Statham is a Transporter The original Transporter was one of Statham's first starring roles in a movie, and the film proved to be a perfect vehicle for him. Or a perfect transport, you might say. Huh. The film was quite noir in nature, with Statham's character, Frank Martin, delivering packages of any sort, no questions asked. But when one delivery ends up being a young lady, Statham soon finds himself taking on an underworld of seedy characters, all trying to bring him undone. Statham was very much the anti-hero which his role as a transporter enabled him to imbue. We in the audience were happy to cheer him on, whilst never forgetting that he was happy to deliver the package in the first place. Incredibly, the sequel takes Statham out of the world of transporting and effectively places him in the role of glorified babysitter. There are some truly awful moments in the movie, including a plane crashing into the ocean at full speed with minimal impact to it and its passengers, and Statham out racing a helicopter in a car despite giving it a head start. But all of this would have been a heck of a lot easier to stomach if it had been entrenched within the world of Statham's character remaining as a transporter. 3. Gremlins 2 Push Too Far Into Comedy the premise of cute-looking mogwais turning evil and running amok in a small town is a wonderfully solid one, toying with humour and horror in the perfect mashing of genres. Unfortunately, the bad publicity for the first film's violence was an example of the feedback loop taking hold in the worst way possible, with the film's sequel, Gremlins 2 – The New Batch, replacing the genuinely scary moments with slapstick comedy instead. Even characters who clearly died in the first film, such as Uncle Murray, made a return for the sequel, as if to please younger audiences traumatised by the original's dark tones. However, all this did was to cheapen the dark joys offered by the first Gremlins film. The sense of threat and epic nature of the original was lost, with ominous characters such as Spike replaced with lame caricatures such as Brain Gremlin, and yes, that was the character name. There's a few decent laughs in the film, but this isn't what the audience was interested in, and the sequel proved a box office bomb, losing $8.5 million! Ooh, that's not so good. 2. Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows Dropped Found Footage Whilst we've since been inundated with found footage films, it's easy to forget how groundbreaking the original Blair Witch Project was. It's the biggest movie to embrace a format that put us firmly in the point of view of fear, shot headfirst into the horror of darkened woods and snotty faces alike. The other benefit of found footage concepts is that it covers up any bad acting, since we're watching unknown actors playing hyped up versions of themselves. That's exactly what the film set them up as, and it absolutely worked for the audience. The same, unfortunately, cannot be said for the sequel though, which despite having the same writers and quite literally a hundred times the budget of the first film, didn't hit the same heights. In fact, it was the increased budget that may have been a contributing factor for the producers to move into a more standard film format, special effects and all. There was also no build-up of suspense, no shaky cam to immerse you in the character's experience, and absolutely no runny noses, although maybe that was a small mercy. What made the decision to change the premise all the more strange was that the found footage format could so easily have been applied to the sequel, and actually added more gravitas and investment for the audience. Had the concluding scenes inside the police station with our protagonists being interrogated by the police been shot in VHS, then the film would have lent itself greater authenticity. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be, but at least the 2016 offering fixed things up nicely. 1. Speed 2 Went to Sea while there were many worthy challengers, no film series could be more deserving to top this list than the Speed franchise. The original Speed was an action movie that was great campy fun, coming with a deceptively clever premise of a bus unable to slip below 50 miles an hour. Contrastingly, Speed 2 Cruise Control will go down as not just one of the worst sequels of all time, but one of the worst stories too. And the blame for this car crash, or in this case two cruise liners brushing up against each other of a movie, is a nonsensical decision to change the original premise. The screenwriters for the sequel tried to invent moments of tension and excitement, such as crashing the boat into a pier and, well, not much else really. The change in concept doomed the film from the start, since it's so open plan and veers away from the close confines of the streets that speed was bound to. 
the lack of conflict bleeds into this disastrous film and dooms the franchise to a dreary end. And what makes this really sad is that Speed 3 Aeroplane would have been awesome. And that's our list. Which of these movies do you think failed the most by veering away from their original concept? And what would you add to this list? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and come back again soon for more lovely film content. Thanks for watching. Ooh, my arm's going everywhere. See you soon.